Hello, it's Matt Linklater, and thanks for joining me on this video training series to help you build long-term financial independence. It's all about learning about money, learning how money works, and getting it to work a little bit better for you. And on this video here, we're going to talk about the most important part building long-term financial independence in step six. Matter of fact, the other day I was at McDonald's. I walked in, uh, bought a bottle of water and I sat in a booth and I got on the phone. So I took a phone call and I was sitting there and there was a little lady to my left and she reminded me of, me of my granny. She had her hair all picked out. She had a big smile on her face. She was wiping down the tables. And then what alarmed me is she went down on one knee and I looked over and she was scraping gum off of the tile. And what occurred to me was this, this isn't her hobby. She doesn't like to do this. She has to do this. When she was your age and my age, do you think that she thought that she'd be working at McDonald's, wiping tables and cleaning gum off of the floor? I'm certain that she didn't. That's why you're listening to this video and that's why it's important for you to implement the things on this video. Now let me be strong with you. There are two things that you have to accomplish in order to build long-term financial independence. There's two hurdles that you have to overcome. And if you don't, you're going to have a tough time becoming financially independent. And those are inflation and taxes. How do you keep up with inflation and how do you eliminate your taxes? So my granny, the 2000 presidential election, she said, ah, they're all crooks. I said, well, granny, you've been alive for since 1912. Do you think one's a lesser crook than the other? Nope, all crooks. And she said, well, you know what? If you're gonna keep badgering me, Matt, I wanna vote for whoever was president in the 80s. And I said, well, Granny, you can't vote for who was president in the 80s, but I'm curious, why do you wanna vote for who was president in the 80s? And she said, all I know is this. My social security check was higher in the 80s than it was in the 90s. See, Granny realized in the 90s they started taxing her social security check. So taxes were really important to Granny. The other thing was, I realized why Granny wouldn't order breakfast. Everything on the menu was too expensive. And matter of fact, just to get her money's worth, if it wasn't nailed down on the table, it went into her purse. All the creams, all the sugars, all the salt, all the pepper. Granny was getting her money's worth. She realized that prices have gotten quite expensive during her lifetime. You need to overcome taxes and inflation. Let me teach you about the rule of 72. Maybe you've heard of it. Einstein invented the rule of 72. So pretty smart guy. What the rule of 72 says is that you take your interest rate, divide it into 72, and that's how long it takes your money to double. Let me explain. Let's say a good rate of return nowadays, you know, I don't know, what would you say? At banks, you could barely get under 1%. Um, in the market, you know, I don't know what that's averaged over the last 10 years. Well, I'll share with you that in a minute. But, you know, what do you think you can get in the market? Um, maybe, maybe you're not in the market because the, the wishing well theory of the market in Wall Street. But let's say to keep up with inflation, you have to get 4%. So let's say inflation's right around 4%. So if you take 4 and divide it into 72, that means your money's going to double every 18 years. So... You have $100, it's going to take 18 years to double to 200 and another 18 to get that to 400 So it's 36 years. So in 36 years, do you think $400 will buy you the same as what $100 does today? I don't know. It'll be close. So how do you change that rate of return? What if you could get a 10 to 12% rate of return into 72, that means your money would double every six years. Now, how powerful would it be to get a 12% rate of return? Well, let's look at your book here and the PDF and on page 13. Now, let's say uh, you had $10,000 to invest and you were 29 years old. At 47, that $10,000 would be worth $20,000. And then at age 65, that, that 20,000 would be worth 40,000. Now, at age 65, how long would $40,000 last you? Maybe a year, maybe a half a year. I don't know if you have spending habits like I see some of my buddies have and some of my friends, it ain't lasting too long. 
So now, what if you could just change the rate of return? What if you can go from a 4% rate of return to a 12% rate of return? And on the right-hand column uh, of page 13 there, it shows you that your 40000 becomes $640,000. Now, that's a big difference. See, we all have a certain amount of time, and we all have a certain amount of money. So if you just change the interest rate, you can retire financially independent. Now, it's not about saving $10,000. It's about saving just a little bit each and every month, and you'll have quite a bit more than if you just started with $10,000. So how do you squirrel away just a little bit each and every month and get better rates of return? Well, let me share with you three ways that you can invest, and you tell me where you'd put your money, and I'll share with you how you can get that better rate of return. So pay attention here. This is really important. So tell me, would you rather invest in a fixed account? What are fixed accounts out there now? Uh, a CD, a money market, a bond maybe. Um, you know, they're getting zero to 1% and you have no loss to your money. You won't be financially independent getting zero to 1% because you're not keeping up with inflation. So albeit that you can't lose your money, zero to 1% isn't getting you anywhere, right? Now, let's say, you're in the market. Now, the great thing about the market, yeah, maybe since 1920, it's done maybe 10%, but whoop, you can lose money. It's a scary proposition. When the market's down, you know, when you're praying in that wishing well kind of fashion, that is going to come back. Now, what if I can give you the best of both worlds? And that's an indexed account or an index strategy. We can eliminate your loss and give you some of the returns of the market. Now, let me explain to you how the index strategy works. So what, what it does is it, it, it's earmarked against or mirrors what the S&P 500 does. So the S&P 500 is 500 of the largest companies in America today. Uh, it represents about 70% of our economy and about 100 different industries. The great thing about uh, mirroring the index strategy in the S&P is it does with whatever the S&P does on the upside but eliminates all the downside. So there is a catch that you usually can get up to about 12 to 17% of the upside of the S&P. So what does that mean? S&P goes up 10%, you get 10%. S&P goes up 20%, you're capped at 17%. But for giving that cap, you get none of the downside. So if the market goes down 20%, you stay even. It's a pretty powerful scenario. Let me share with you how it works. So let's say again, a nice sum of money, Let's say you have $10,000 and you put it into the market. 10K. Okay? The market goes up 10%. You now have $11,000. Let's say the market goes up another 10%. Now you have $12,100. The market can go down too, though, can't it? And when it goes down, it seems to be going down pretty scary, uh, scary amounts in the last 10 years. So let's say it goes down 20%. Now you're sitting at about 9,600. Can the market go down two years in a row? Of course it can. Let's say now you go down 15%. So now you're sitting at about 8,200. All right. Now let's say the market rebounds and it rebounds up 10%. So now you're at about 9,400. So here's what the index strategy will do for you. The years the market's down 20%, it'll go sideways. And then when it goes up, you'll get the upside, and you'll be sitting about 13500 So that's the power of the index strategy. You're going to eliminate all the downside and only get all the upside. And that compounding effect will help you get those double-digit rates of return. Matter of fact, if you were down here, it would take you 70% to get you back to where the index strategy was at. Over the last 10 years, the market strategy has done about 2%, and... The index strategy has done about nine and a quarter percent without any risk to your money. So where do you want to put your money? The index strategy is a powerful uh, tool to help you maximize your earnings, keep up with inflation, and we also have ways to eliminate your taxes. So now go back to your book here and go to page uh, uh, 14. So true story. Guy walks into a bank 30 years ago. He's 65 now, so he's 35 30 years ago. He says, you know what? I want to have a million dollars by the time I retire. 
Banker says, okay, well, we have a 5% CD. So he says, let me, let me calculate this. He gets, his, get out, gets out his calculator. He says, okay, in 30 years at 5% CD, you're going to need to save $1,600 a month. What do you think the guy said? He said, you're crazy. He walks out of the bank. Guess where he's working now? I'm sure you've seen him. He's working at Walmart. He's working at McDonald's. Now, what if you could just get a better rate of return? Let's say you can get a 10% rate of return. That $1,600 amount comes down to about $899 or $900. Now, still a large sum of money, but by just changing that rate of return, you can save less money and still have your million dollars. Now, what if you did it in a tax advantage way similar to your 401k, so it grew tax with those, uh, that, those tax advantages, but when you took your money out, it was tax-free as well. That number comes down to somewhere in the $400 range. Now, let me ask you this. Do you know Americans out there that can save three to $400 a month? Now, if you're making $40,000 a year, you need to save 10% of your income, which would be somewhere around just over $300 a month. It's powerful. It's important. Now, matter of fact, I was sitting with a lady not too long ago, and when I showed her this, and this is our second meeting, our implementation phase, she said, Matt, do you know what? I said, no, I don't know what, but I see you're excited. You've got to tell me something here. She said, I could go to every one of my neighbors on this street and not one of them, not any single one of them, will be able to tell me when they can retire or how they're going to retire. She said, Matt, because you came out and shared with me these concepts, I now know when I can retire. You know, that's enthusiasm I love to see. I get excited when I'm sitting in front of people and they see the possibility. So build long-term financial independence for yourself. Implement some of these concepts. Now the next page, uh, the seventh area here is building, having wills and trusts, avoiding estate taxes. So if you have um, so some assets, we can help you um, building those trusts, so avoiding some of those estate taxes. We can help you avoid probate and things of that nature. And just make sure that your money is well protected so God forbid something happens to you, that money passes in the most efficient way possible so Uncle Sam doesn't get uh, a bigger wallet, or a piece of your wallet share. It's very, very important. Um, so really, is building long-term financial independence uh, boils down to this. It's just as I was climbing up each rung of those, that ladder to jump off of the high dive and looking at my brother, each rung, I got a little bit closer to the top. It's like all the things you've been learning in this video training series is getting up to the top. Well, now you got to the top of the diving board. You got the solid concepts. Are you going to jump and take action? My brother took me aside and said, Matt, you can't use the doggy paddle to get to the other side of the pool. They started teaching me the freestyle stroke. They taught me a better strategy to get to the other side of the pool. So there I was on the edge of the pool. I dove in with a dive that would have made the great Olympic diver Greg Louganis jealous. I started with a freestyle stroke that would have made Michael Phelps jealous. And there I was on the way to the other side of the pool in building long-term financial independence. You have the strategies, now it's time to take action. Get in touch with a safe money advisor here and we would love to come out and share with these strategies. It doesn't take much and all it takes is for you to implement the strategies and take action and build that long-term financial independence for yourself and your family.